Welcome to another episode of In Conversation with Roy, a global leaders podcast vlog series, a forum in which we interact with global leaders from around the world and do a deep dive in terms of their experiences, their a learning graph and the success curve as well, and more importantly, bring out insights and perspectives that truly matter. The key to attracting subscribers is people share stories. How shareable is your story? You are the two pillars of monetizable uh, news organizations, mainly the content and your audience sets. When you are designing for the very small screen of a phone, sure. you have four seconds hmm. to seduce me, to hmm. read. Create the whole newspaper as one music composition rather than disparate parts. That's a very interesting anecdote though. Finally understand, okay, after six months, what I want to do with the team, how I want to play. Mm -hmm. And that was also the moment I got a call from Hockey India. Uh, should, can you do the men's team? Can you take a call from Ruland? I think 11 goals, 11 amazing set of players, 11 days when you turn around conceding 11 goals in the first three matches and then being able to come back to the drawing board starting afresh instilling the self-belief that yes we can go forward and then a series of four matches on the trot to almost eclipsing the semi-finals as well that must have been a great life and i knew exactly how i wanted the team be at the olympics 2020 and that is where we worked to if you don't read the newspapers you are not informed but if you do read the newspapers, you are misinformed. The advertising revenues are no longer enough to sustain a media organization. So uh, the business model needs to shift uh, to a uh, model where you put more focus, more emphasis on the end user, which is the consumer, uh, because the advertiser is not the end user. I don't let schooling interfere with my education per se. And there was one more wise crack who said, you know, I was born intelligent, but in you know, education ruined me. So having those two concepts probably at the background of it. Now, what's been the story of your life so far? So I'll, I'll get to the third one, Sanjeev, sure. which has been the axiom so far as my life is concerned. Mm -hmm. And that's a Socrates axiom. And Socrates said that education and learning is the progressive realization of your own ignorance. There's one thing that has lacked probably and that has been reflecting in all the corporate surveys as well is the scalability and the employability index of students coming out of it is something rather dismal. So as Shashi Tharoor you know, would have very, uh, very aptly articulated, he says that there are very few uh, islands of excellence floating in the seas of mediocrity. Teachers should sure. be the highest paid. In, in any society, Absolutely. in any society, yeah. because they are the ones who are molding the minds. So, in fact, he said that uh, soldiers and teachers should be the ones who should be the paid the highest because a teacher creates civilization and the soldier protects that civilization. The culture eats strategy for breakfast. So, how do you let that? Uh, marriage happen within the right culture and the business to follow. And strategy probably is also the essence of choosing what not to do in terms of the plethora of options you have. Do you agree? More, more what not to do <laughs> than what to do. <laughs> a business is a business, uh, mm -hmm. Sanjeev. It doesn't change. It can be fintech and be logistics sec. Uh, by the way, uh, we are in logistics sec, not fintech. Correct. Um, so, so it doesn't matter what business you are in. It's just the product that changes, and of course, the marketplace, your clients change. I'll just leave you with one particular thought, though. Prince Philip, you know, he had once famously remarked: "If a man opens the door of his car, it could be either for his new wife or for his car." 
what would be that for you though? <laughs> the next startup probably. <laughs> next startup. Absolutely. Absolutely. HR, we accept that we are human resources, but we are human first and resources later. So how do you demystify this particular animal called HR? <laughs> I think you need to dig a little deeper than uh, sure. the titles. One is, of course, that the content of the role has changed. I see, I see a decline in that level of uh, connectedness, mm-hmm. which I think is uh, is also one of the softer capabilities of HR. You need to be very emotionally connected with people and uh, be able to intuit and understand what is happening. And mm-hmm. I think. Uh, that's a capability that we need to continually build. One of the new age companies, the let's say the internet.com kind of company, they reduced their notice period from three months to, or from one month to 15 days. Okay. And uh, their CEOs made a very profound statement saying that we wouldn't like you to go. But if you do go, we believe, if you do want to go, we do believe that we should stand in your way. And 15 days is enough in, in these days of asynchronous work. 15 days is enough to achieve a handover and uh, we wish you all the best and hope you come back to us. When Great Place to Work really identifies mentors and ranks, organization mm-hmm. first, fifth or tenth or twentieth, you know, they don't really look at a homogeneous way of doing things. So you could mm-hmm. have a culture company in the top five, whereas the headcount is varied. The workplace dynamics are varied. The genre mm-hmm. the dynamics of people's centricity in each of the sectors are again varied. So how are mm-hmm. we able to rank companies on unparalleled factors? Really? Mm-hmm. So your thoughts on Very good question. It's a very good question, which we also used to get asked quite often. And, and I remember when I used to meet their people, uh, whether the nurses, and I hear about their job circumstances and I used to think it's really difficult to make these people happy because the nature of the job is very challenging. So if I would go back and say, is it really fair to put all companies in one uh, list? I would say today, no. Uh, The ideal scenario to be to have an industry specific list. Um, I don't know what's the plan for a great place to work, but it will probably make more sense to the audience if we have industry specific lists. Everybody is looking at transformation, like how do we transform? And as part of the bigger business transformation, marketing is a key component. So a department like transformation, I would potentially centralize if you have a department like loyalty. I think what marketing people do better than other functions, in my opinion, is that they understand the voice of customer better than most. Somebody sent me a, some a blog written and said, what do you think about it? So I said, yeah, it seems okay, but you know, some data is missing and so on. He says, you know, I, I got it generated on OpenAI. Now, that's quite a wide range of experts, isn't it? Thank you. A whole lot of gratitude to my guests and viewers without whom this journey wouldn't have been as enjoyable and gratifying. The mission of In Conversation with Roy is to bring together an eclectic mix of very unique global leaders and being able to dissect their thoughts across a diverse range of genres, issues and themes that truly matter. It's so wonderful to hear your positive feedback and encouragement to keep doing more. In the coming days to come, we will endeavor to bring you more eclectic leaders from across genres and domains and probably also include a physical studio coverage as we scale up to bring more across the show. An earnest request to you all to probably uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you do love the kind of work that we do and keep showering your love and blessings and inputs along the way. For now, this is your host Roy signing off. Uh, Please keep shining, do take care of your health and see you later. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future episodes.